All right, yeah, welcome back to some more Magic Arena, and today we're going to be playing some Green Black Cauldron of Eternity in Historic. So this is a card I've not really built around. It's an interesting deck to build around for sure. So let's get into the actual build around card, shall we, before we get into the rest. 12 mana for a Cauldron of Eternity. It's a legendary artifact that says it costs two less for each creature card in your graveyard. So if you have five creature cards in our graveyard, it gets to its minimum cost of two black mana. And whenever a creature you control dies, you put it onto the bottom of its owner's library. And that's kind of important because this is a reanimation piece. Three mana to tap to pay two life, so lo lots of stuff to do there, to return a creature card from your graveyard to the battlefield, and you can only activate this any time you could cast a sorcery, which essentially allows, uh, allows it to have this uh, shuffling effect in a nutshell, because you can't respond to its own trigger kind of thing. So it's an interesting build around. It's a reanimation deck that stops you from reanimating creatures that have died on the battlefield. So instead of doing that kind of thing where we're just drawing and discarding or having our creatures die and reanimating them uh, with like blood for bones and things like that, we've actually got a different package. We're going to be doing a little bit of a self-mill strategy in Golgari. So we've got things like Maya Triton, Glowspore Shaman, and Gorging Vulture. Those are going to be the primary ones in the early game to mill over the top cards of our library. So in the case of Maya Triton, we've got two cards and we gain two life. Really good at stopping early game aggro, being that it's also a death toucher and a life gain source. We've got the Glow Spore Shaman, which actually increases the odds of us drawing lands as well. We're running 23 in this deck. We also have a Ghost Quarter as well for Field of the Dead shenanigans, so we can use this to re replay Ghost Quarter uh, over and over again, if that's something we want to do. Uh, but it mills three. And then we've got Gorging Vulture, and it's another early aggro piece to defend against as well. So we've got the three mana 2-2 two, two Flyer, and it mills over four cards from our library, and we gain one life for each creature card put into our graveyard this way. We are running a whopping 27 creatures in our deck, which means that we have got nearly half of our deck as creatures, which is very important. Very, very important for this kind of deck, because if you're milling over cards you really want this to hit as many creatures as possible. The sooner Cauldron of Eternity can cost two black, the better. We've got removal in the form of Playcrafter, Chupacabra, and Cavalier of Night. Those are going to be our creature ones. Oh, also one of Pelucranos as well, because we're going to be milling over lands so we can escape a Pelucranos. And it has a fight ability, which is really cool. I actually ended up um, beating a blue-white high alert deck uh, last night with this list with a Pelucranos, because our opponents did not have uh, a Hyla or a um, Huatli in play at the time, so they were all like 0-4s and 0-5s, so my Pelucranos just machine gunned their, down their entire board and stayed a 6-6. Six, six. It was beautiful. But anyway, back to it. We got Playcrafter, Chupacabra, and Cavalier. Both, all of these have Enter the Battlefield abilities to kill things. Murderous Rider here to kill Planeswalkers as well, should we need to. But Playcrafter does the similar thing, but with less choice. Playcrafter is really good to combo with Journey to Eternity, which is our uh, essentially our fourth cauldron. We're going to be spicing it up a little bit. If we've got a Journey to Eternity in play that's flipped, uh, we get to pay five and tap it to reanimate a creature. So it's a little bit more powerful than a cauldron. Uh, but Journey is a lot harder to resolve because it's an aura that you have to attach to a creature and that creature has to uh, specifically die. Um, so there's a lot of risk involved with Journey to Eternity. We've played around with this card a lot. I love this card. It's probably one of my favorite to come out of that set um, just as a build around kind of thing. Uh, but Journey, is, uh, Cauldron in this case, is going to be just that little bit better for us. But yes, we got Murderous Rider, Maelstrom Pulse as well. This is going to be one of the few non-permanents in our deck, and that's kind of important because we've got the Acolyte of Affliction here. Four mana, two, three. When it enters the battlefield, it self-mills for two cards, and then you get to return a permanent card from your graveyard to your hand. So permanents that we're going to be looking to return are obviously going to be things like Cauldron of Eternity. So if we're going to be self-milling, in the early game, there's a good chance that we're going to roll over this Cauldron of Eternity. So it's just a matter of uh, either finding a Cauldron in our hand or finding an Acolyte of Affliction and then having that return a Cauldron. And once we've got that, we've got the engine going. So that's really the only stickler with this deck. The only chance that you could do some non-game shenanigans is if you do not find 
one of these six cards essentially. Uh, you could make an argument to actually go to four Acolytes, but I think the four drop slot is just a little bit too heavy at the moment. So I've opted against it, but there are these two cards right here who are kind of like flavor pieces, but they're also nice tech as well against certain situations that you could actually cut if you really wanted to. And at which point I would probably put in the fourth Acolyte to increase the consistency rather than having some toolbox effects. We got Vraska, Golgari Queen, which allows us to uh, destroy permanents with three or less mana cost as well, so that's really useful. And Acolyte can bring back Vraska as well, which is very nice. You can also use the plus two to sacrifice permanents as well, if we really want to. So if something has Journey to attach to it, we can sacrifice it. We can also sacrifice lands if we want, if we've got far too many of them. If we're going to play a Glow Spore anyway, then we might as well sack a land, play Glow Spore and put that land back on top. Something like that is definitely an option for us. Uh, but yes, our tech pieces. we got Izoni, it's Thousand Eyed. Six mana for a 2-3 with Undergrowth. Undergrowth essentially counts the amount of creatures in your graveyard and then does something. In this case, it's going to make 1-1 one, one black and green insect creature tokens for each creature in our graveyard, which is going to be a lot. Since half of our deck is creatures, we're going to be making a fair amount with this one. We're hoping for about 5 or 6 average, honestly, uh, for the undergrowth before we want to cast Izoni. But it's one of those things that we can repeat, uh, Vraska being very useful at doing that. So we can do like Izoni, uh, play it out, sack it to Vraska. If we haven't got an old, a cauldron in play or we've got a journey, and we can do this kind of loop where we sack Izoni, reanimate Izoni, sack Izoni, old Braska, win the game. We've also got a one of Lotlith Giant as well because it's got the undergrowth ability to deal one damage to an opponent for each creature card in our graveyard. So this is kind of like a one hit kill kind of card. We don't really want to be drawing this, so it's a one of. Um, but if we have this in our graveyard, we can build up the game. And that actually just makes Cauldron of Eternity an actual win con. Uh, specifically an actual win con. It's kind of like Bane firing your opponent. Uncounterable damage from the Lotlith Giant is kind of what we're looking for with that one-off card. Other than that though, uh, the deck is very grindy. We have a one-off Ver Virulent Plague, which actually plays against the Field of the Dead deck. I added this one in quite late on, honestly. Uh, it might not necessarily need to be in here depending on what you're seeing. Uh, if you're not seeing very much Field of the Dead, then you can cut this card and you can add any number of uh, things, honestly. Like another Gorging Vulture would be fine, another Acolyte would be fine, Fourth Murderous Rider would be fine. Honestly, there's a lot of flexible slots here and Virul Virulent Plague is definitely one of them. But if we have this in play, our opponent's Field of the Dead doesn't work. And if they kill this with something like an Assassin's Trophy or anything of that sort, we have our Acolyte of Afflictions, which can pull it back out of the graveyard to replay it. So uh, in the Field of the Dead matchup, we want to be milling this over, finding it with Acolyte and playing it. And our opponent can't win if we can keep looping this card over and over and over again. So they're going to need like a Banishing Light or something to get rid of it completely. But if they've got a Banishing Light, I've got Vraska and Maelstrom Pulse, so I can just get it back. So yeah, hopefully we find this card if we play against Field of the Dead. Hopefully we don't find this card at all if we don't play against Field of the Dead. Again, it's one of those one-offs that you don't really want to see, except for in a specific matchup. Without further ado, I've waffled on far too long with this deck. I've got some doozies of matchups for you guys, so hopefully you enjoy the gameplay. If you do, make sure to like and subscribe. It helps with the engagement on the channel, and I greatly appreciate it. Thank you very much, guys. Enjoy. This video is brought to you by the generous support of our wonderful patrons and channel members that you see here. If you'd like to support the channel and get access to cool content like sneak peeks, bonus videos, polls on future content, or access to a personal deck critique from myself every month, then hit the join button below the video, or check out the Patreon link down in the description below. With all that said, let's get into the gameplay. Alrighty then, we're in, and this looks like a reasonable hand. We've got a little bit of self-mill to cheapen the cauldron. We got the cauldron, which is our build-around card, and we got some removal. So, pretty happy with this hand. Mana base also looking pretty, pretty decent. So, what are we up against? Mono blue tempo by the looks of things. Why is it so popular these days? I really do not know. All right, so this gets three, this gets two. 
Um, I'll probably go Maya Triton. Because if I go Playcrafter next turn, then Maya Triton's just the smaller, less damage dealing thing. Oh, it's wizards. Okay. Fair. Right, well, we're going to swing for two and see if they want to trade off. I highly doubt that they do, but if they do, it's pretty good. Okay, they do not. We are, I think, going to throw out Glow Spore Shaman here. Actually allows us to put a land on top so we can play a Vraska. We've got two creatures in the yard now. Um, I think I will thin the deck. There's not much of a choice to be made there. It's kind of just... Ooh, we dragon us. Okay. Well, if they've got we dragon us, I think maybe I go Chupacabra instead. Let's grab a swamp in that deck. I think we just add to the board of big boys. Eventually, they'll like block our Triton, our Glow Spore Shaman. Or cheapen this by four and that means we can just cast it and then we can start our graveyard shenanigans i'm waiting for uh what's her name the lady who's wizard lord but flying wizard lord <laughs> i don't i don't use my words very carefully apparently um i think this is a braska time this is perfectly fine i think the pressure is good enough so we're going to kill Wee Dragonauts. And our opponent will scoop. Yeah, they'll be left with two 1-1s. One if they block these two as a profitable block, they're left with nothing. And it actually progresses my board state somewhat. They've got no Dragonauts, unless they had the dive down there, which they didn't. And yeah, they're basically just building from whatever they've got here. I'm assuming it's like Wizards Lightnings and they're not really going to be doing much or something like that. But yeah, pretty good. Let's go for another game. Alrighty then, we're in, and I like the look of this hand actually. It's always nice to see an Acolyte of Affliction. If you're not going to see Cauldron, having an Acolyte is definitely the thing, because we mill it over with a Maya Triton or the Acolyte, then we've got that coming back. But yeah, this looks pretty good. We've got Removal, Removal, and Decent Mana. Decent Mana is kind of like the primary thing you want to concern yourself with, I would say. From there, the deck kind of just... Solves itself, as it were. Okay, I think I'm going to go thin the deck first. Just go grab a forest. I can pretend to have five different colours of mana if I wanted to, but I'm a little bit lazy, so I'm just going to crack it now. Give our opponent that information. Don't really think they can use forest as good information, but there you go. It's not as though this deck has been seen before. I just realized I've left the window open. Looks like maybe a Death and Taxes style deck. Thalia Sleeves kind of give it away. Uh, it's not actually going to be all that great, I would say. Thalia's not going to do very much anyway. So Maya Triton comes down, thins the deck, hits absolute garbage, which is unfortunate. Hopefully Gorging Fulcher can do a little bit. We did actually want one of those lands. Getting to four is obviously ideal but we can play on three anyway human okay help yourself to my non-creatures i have none of them yeah so we're just gonna go gold dream vulture we hit loads of lands last time so this should hit loads of creatures and then we gain a fair bit of life there trade <laughs> i'll just i will trade all day opponent Virtually every single thing on my battlefield is there for trading. Alright, so we hit two creatures. Not too bad. We got one, two, three in there at the moment, and lots of lands. So that's a six cost reduction on Cauldron of Eternity right now. Which is not, like, the best thing in the world, but... We'll see. So, Freebooter's got no good attacks. Our opponent's thinking, how do they want to tax me, I guess. Uh, they could... Ooh, red! I was not expecting red. Blue, I would see. And black, obviously. But red! It's a new one on me. Okay. 
I think it's going to be Acolyte of Affliction here. I don't care about Freebooter. I'd rather save my removal spells for later, and our opponent doesn't know about Vraska right now, and I'd, I'd be happy leaving it that way. Okay, so we get to put a permanent from our graveyard onto our hands. I think maybe it's just Overgrown too. Progress our mana base a little bit. I guess since I've already made my land drop, I should have grabbed a basic. But uh, that's fine. Or even a Fabled Passage. Not the end of the world, though. We're already higher than our life total. Our starting life total, that is. Bone Crusher Giant coming in. Well, they know we're going to choop that, right? And we got another Acolyte. Okay, so we play our tap lands. Choop Bone Crusher. Because uh, we're using an ability to kill it, we're not going to take the two on Bone Crusher there. And then we get to start pressuring our opponent's life total. Our board's looking better than theirs. We are slowly working our way towards a better Cauldron of Eternity, because we've got the Cavalier in there, which we can actually get back with Acolyte of Affliction, so this is a removal spell. <laughs> it's a slow removal spell, but it is one nonetheless. Plague Crafter. Cool. I'll put a Chupacabra in the trash so that we can pull it back, should we need it. Which we don't. Um, <laughs> okay. Well, maybe we go Vraska here before they go Thalia and tax us a little bit. We can get rid of the Plague Crafter. If our opponent wants to stomp with a Bone Crusher Giant, that's completely up to them. And then this opens up a little attack as well. Kite Sail Freebooter. Perfectly timed, we got nothing you can take. Field of Ruin. That's going to be annoying if we get our Journey to Eternity, but it's a side plan, if anything, so that's okay. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I think we're just going to throw out another Chupacabra here. Kill the Freebooter. And then we'll tick up on a land here, I think, with Vraska. So get rid of your blocker. Your opponent's just kind of waiting to uh, use their Field of Ruin. Uh, get rid of the forests. We're primarily black. In fact, 100% of the cards in our deck are black. Some of those black creatures are green, though. So, always favor. Ooh, okay. Stopping Enter the Battlefield abilities. But we have Murderous Rider, and we can also minus with Vraska as well to turn that off. And that was just... That was just a ruffle stomp. Tax me, why don't you? Nobody taxes this individual. No, no, no. Alright, next game. <laughs> Alrighty then, we're in. And there's a little bit of a fatal flaw with this hand. In that we don't have any self mill. Uh, we do have an Acolyte of Affliction. Which can do a little bit of self-milling, sure, but doing it at turn 4 is way too late in my books. I think by turn 3 our opponent will have multiple creatures, so Plaguecrafter will be inefficient. So we're going to take the mull on that one. And we get virtually the same hand back. Uh, but if they do multiples, we've got that. God, do we just take this one? Is this one we take? Probably don't even want Cauldron in this hand, we'll just get it later. I mean, yeah. Throw a cauldron back. We self-mill like crazy, and with Acolytes, we're not going to struggle to find it again. So, hopefully we find one of our many, 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 many self-milling cards. Oh, hopefully our opponent's playing mill. That'd be fantastic. Ish. <laughs> It'd be fantastic. Ish. Naturally, we'd want our opponent to stop milling us eventually, and also not use Ashiox, because that would be... Pretty much the silver bullet to our deck. Alright, so our opponent's on blue-white. Probably control, if I had to guess. Uh, we do have a Maelstrom Pulse if they have it to Fairy Time Raveler, so I'm just guessing they're just going to tick up, or maybe they go for the... Sweet. Zero value 
to Fairy. Well, actually, we're just going to go Vraska because we got our land drop. Minus on to Fairy. Punnant didn't do anything last turn effectively. I guess they did three damage to Vraska, you could think of it that way. Elite Guard Mage. Okay. Is this actually a flicker kind of deck? Interesting. Uh, we're just going to kill the Guard Mage before they have, like, Thassas and maybe Flicker spells like Justicia's Portal in their hand, which would be less than ideal. I think I'm going to get rid of a Forest here. If we draw a land, we can play a land. Otherwise, we've got the Glowspore Shaman. Sorry about the people outside. I forgot yet again to close my window. We've got the Glowspore Shaman to put a land on top anyway. Another Guard Mage for our opponent. And we get a Fabled Passage, so I'm going to crack that. I'm going to choop the Guard Mage again before they can leave up anything nasty. And we're going to get in. I think once again I might actually sack a land. Maybe it's just a creature. Rather than my lands. Because if I draw a land, I can actually do Gorgian Vulture Glow Spore Shaman. And that's adding power to the board anyway. Hey, look at that. Better looking than good. So now we've got Vraska to minus. Jesus Christ, someone's dying out there. Maelstrom Pulse will do nothing against Thassa. If we've got a Fibble Thip, though, we can ping that away, I guess. Silvergill Adepts. Draw a card. Revealing another Silvergill. Okay. Well then. Ooh, Cavalier of Night. Doesn't currently reanimate anything. I think we might just go for the kill Silvergill plan here. The less they have to flicker with Thassa, the better, since we can't really get rid of it right now. Uh, I don't actually know if we've got any way of getting rid of Thassa. Interestingly enough. No, we don't. Murderous Rider is a destroy. We need literal exile. We've only got destroys, I think, in here. So, I guess you could run some Eat to Extinctions, but I don't see that necessarily being all that worthwhile. Alright, so Gorging Vulture. E. All right, so we found the cauldron, which is really good. That means Acolyte can go fetch that next turn. And we can put a land on top as well, which is going to be a Fable Passage to thin the deck. So how many creatures have we got in here? One, two. Is that all? Oh, dear. Might have to do some sacking of our own creatures, I guess. All depends on what our opponent's doing here. Nearly every single creature they've played so far says draw a card on it. I guess what they're doing is they're trying to draw to Agent of Treachery. That'd be a thing, I guess. Alright, so if we did Cavalier of Night, which I think is what we're going to do here. Going to go Swamp, Cavalier... We will sack Chupacabra to kill the Guard Mage. Swing for five. And then we can tick up and sack Cavalier and we can get back Maya Triton perhaps, which will hopefully thin the deck out a little bit more and Build up that cauldron value. Someone's dying outside. I really do apologize. Someone should help that child. Alright, Maya Triton, help me. Hey, look at that. We actually added more to the graveyard. Should expect so as well, because half the deck is our creatures. Alright. So my main worry is eventually they have just Agent of Treachery and... Misery resolves. That is my one hope that my opponent is at least being an interesting flicker deck. 
Silvergale, reveal Silvergale. And sending towards Vraska. And that is completely fair, because if they didn't do that, we have the minus three open. But we will be sending a lot of damage towards our opponent. So, Flicker Cloudkin's here. I am going to be all attacking. Since it just fills up my graveyard anyway. And now they're discarding to hand size, because literally all the creatures in their deck say draw a card. <laughs> okay, so, swing. Yay! I know, I agree too. Guess they're gonna spend some mana to tap down some creatures. That's fair, I guess. Yay! No, that's not a yay, child. It's quite the nay, in fact. <laughs> Oh god, kill me. Alright, um, let's go Acolyte. Please don't have Essence Scatter or whatever. Seems they do not. Alright, so we can go and grab Cauldron of Eternity. And it's two mana, so we can go play said Cauldron of Eternity. And hope to god our opponent doesn't run counter magic. It's an opt. Okay. Scries to the top. No spell pierce one time. It's an ops. Alright. Maybe they're planning on decking themselves. I could definitely see that being the case. This could be a self-mill strategy. Okay, I am going to... Tick up... And sack a gorging vulture, I guess. I guess it should be a land, really. Um, we've got plenty already. That should be pressuring my opponent if they are indeed trying to go for, like, Thassa's Oracle. Tap my dude -er. That's fine. So Vraska's gonna die. Not really too bothered. Acolyte of Affliction can get a back later anyway. But yeah, I definitely didn't play it as optimally as I should there. So we got Lotleth Giant who deals six damage when reanimated. So if we can get our opponent to ten, we can just win off of that. Murderous Rider. So kill Cloud can see her. Opponent's got a veto. Okay. Uh, with two mana short of Maelstrom Pulse plus Cauldron. But I guess we can swing, see what happens. Opponent goes to nine. We play Lotleth Giant. Opponent dies. Oh no, seven, sorry. <laughs> Never mind. They're not quite dead, but they're going to die, right? I will jump. Okay. Time wipe. You have sealed your own doom unless you can get rid of this cauldron of eternity. I will lend you. Goodbye, Lotleth Giant. I don't need you. Do not need you. I can build a battlefield all on my own. With blackjack. Oh, goes. Alright, draw some cards. What are they at now? 29. I'm at 34. Gorging Vulture. Alright, so let's go Vulture. See what we roll over. A Cavalier. Uh, we can go Cavalier, I guess. Sack the Gorging Vulture. Oh, we could actually, we got Chupacabra. Try and add too much to the board for our opponent to deal with. And then pass the turn. So now they need two blockers. Well, they need three, actually, because we've got the Maelstrom Pulse. Time wipe. Okay. They just have all the time wipe in their Flicker deck. 
They have to be self-mill. It has to be a Thassa's Oracle. I don't believe it's anything else. Okay. Silvergill Adept. Yeah. Flick a Silvergill. Draw a card. It's a very slow win to, way to win the game, opponent. <laughs> I'm sure there are better ways to do... Uh, To do a Thassa's Oracle deck. Right, we are going to go with uh, Ravenous Chupacabra. Kill Silvergill. I think we will then Legend Rule our Cauldron of Eternity. And I will get. Uh, I think a Cavalier is decent enough. If they board wipe, I get a 3 drop back. Decline. Do you have a third time wipe? Are we on three now? We got Teferi Time Raveler. Okay. So you can bounce Cauldron, I guess. It costs two mana, though. Ooh, they're going to go with Cavalier. All right. Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. Ugh. Why are you the way that you are? Tucking my ravenous chupacabra. Okay. So, we're gonna go Maya Triton. Mill, potentially. I think they've got more ops in hand. I think that's basically the only thing we've. Wow, absorb. Okay. I was gonna say that's basically the only interaction we've seen. Now we kill the only annoying Teferi. And then we reanimate, I think, a Maya Triton. Actually, no, nah, it's Cavalier. I need the extra damage here and that board wipe insurance. Suddenly they just turned into blue white control. I really, really didn't see that coming. Cloud can see ya. I need another Acolyte, I think, so I've got this Spare Cauldron instead, in case they do 5 mana Teferi and took this one. Because it's just going to be irritating to, uh, to get it back otherwise. More Maya Tritons. Alright, well, Maya Triton. What's next? Absorb the Maya Tryon. Okay. Um. Lo, 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 lo. Oh, got another Chupacabra in there. Let's reanimate the Chupacabra. Yes. Yes. Tap it. Give in. Alright. Cloud can see it down. We're top decking a Chupacabra. We have a Cavalier. So we have a summoning sick creature to sacrifice. That is also a removal well, spell. Opponent gaining life. Drawing cards. There are 18. Opponent's deck is suddenly becoming quite tedious. Alright. Chupacabra gets absorbed because suddenly they're blue-white control. Yeah. Nearly threw them all, I'm pretty sure. Cavalier. The tapping begins, I guess. No, they're just making sure that I kill one first, which is fair. So we're going to kill the Choop to kill the Guard Mage. Then they'll tap down with Thassa. God, they so quickly became a really irritating deck. Alright. I guess my deck's not, like, any less irritating, to be honest. Alright, they've got like a instant speed time wipe. 
Gotta make sure I've got, like, enough to bring back. I've got two Maya Tritons in there, or Plaguecraft and Maya Triton. Or even a Murderous Rider if I really wanted to uh, have that shuffle back into the deck. Great. Um, let me have a look at the bottom of the deck. Should always check the bottom. We do want that Lotlith Giant, so I guess I'm just gonna shuffle this up. Bonin, getting the tapping out of the way. Uh-huh. Uh-huh, uh-huh. How are they at 17 again? It's crazy. We will have a Maya Triton. Playcraft Izoni, that's a good one. Izoni with Undergrowth 8, which is 7 when we reanimate Izoni. That should go wide enough, right? In theory. Yeah. I feel like we've seen most, if not all, of their counter magic. Three absorbs and a Dovin's Veto. I've probably got a little bit more than that. To be honest. Uh, but we will be swinging to make them use it. Discard to hand size. It's going to be a land. That could be pretty good. Okay. Well, I'm gonna bait out the counter magic by putting this on the Maya Triton. Yeah. And then we pray this resolves. Okay, they've got all the vetoes, all the absorbs, all the teferis. <laughs> Good lord. Alright, so we're digging for Acolyte of Affliction or just a Cauldron of Eternity off the top. Gonna go after that Teferi so they can't wipe me at instant speed. Alright, 11 cards left. I think they've just got an Oracle. I think that's what this is all about. Another 3 Fairy. Fantastic. Bounces the Cavalier. Wow, it's 19 minutes we've been playing this game. 19 whole minutes of pure joy. Flicker Cloud can see her. Ah, the one dead card in our deck. Fantastic. Right. Uh, I think we're just doing nothing here, because tap, 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 Haru. Yup. Uh, we do have a play crafter, so we could play Cavalier. <laughs> Sack a Cavalier. <laughs> that allows us to get a play crafter. Whoopee. Have you got the fifth absorb? I'm just going to hold this as an unknown. It's never going to be useful, but... Eight cards left. I've got time. I'd say our opponent has not shown a good enough win con here for Thassa's Oracle to not be their win con. Everything they've done up until this point has kind of sucked, tempo-wise. But, I mean, look at us. We're drawing Fabled Passages, so... <laughs> we don't know what our, our deck looks like. Can't gain any life, because our opponent keeps tapping down. Oh, wait. Ah, they've got instant speed. Three fairy. I'm just going to send it and see if I can gain some life. Time wipe! Alright. Play Grafter. On scrying. We're gonna get rid of the Teferi with this Plague Crafter. 
That's the hope, the dream at least. So we sack Playcrafter, they sack Teferi. They just play Teferi again, no doubt. How many have they had now? One, two... Ah, oh, they've got Hero of Dominaria. Fantastic. 9,000 Teferis is how many they've got. Draw a card. I mean, their Devotion is now three. So if they've got the Oracle in hand, they win right now. Do you win right now? Now the Devotion's four. Do you win right now? I feel if I was them, I'd probably be bouncing my Cloud Kinseer if I had an Oracle in my deck. It'd be pretty funny if, uh, if they actually don't have an Oracle. I'm waiting for that moment. It's going to be a moment of pure joy. Alright, 9,000 counters. We got another one? Not this time. We have run them out of Absorbs. Alright, get that Seer out. Pass the turn. Got three cards left. Devotion is more than enough for an Oracle win right now. Let's see what they do. It's definitely plausible that they were hoping that this would win them a game through combat damage. Because the disruption has been real with Thassa. Teferi. Tux Teferi. I think they're going to rely on Teferi tucking. Which, unless they have... You took the wrong Teferi, my dude. Right? Am I losing my mind? Or are we doing something else here? They're not even ticking up the Teferi. Okay. Well, the key to victory is now Teferi tucking. Get the emblem tuck Teferi. They've definitely got more than enough mana just to tap down all my creatures, so I can't interact with it. So, like, I'm... Looking for Maelstrom Pulse at this point. There's a Lotleth Giant. Uh, we definitely don't want lands. We got any basics left? I actually don't know. I don't think so. Yeah, they, they literally need Teferi to ult so they can get rid of my permanence because I won't mill myself. And while they won't mill themselves either, eventually my board will build up. Teferi took Thassa. Alright. Got to spare Thassa then, no doubt. Yep. Just filling up the deck so they don't lose to it. I'm glad my opponent... Oh, come on now. I'm glad my opponent didn't have... Agent of Treachery. It's definitely, I think, at this point, the least interesting way to win with Thassa. So it's nice to see something happening here. Opponent's deck should definitely have a one of Thassa's Oracle, which it looks like they don't, because it has to be one of these two, if they haven't already got it in their hand. And maybe they're planning on decking me with... It's just not gonna happen. Because I can put perms in my deck too. It's not gonna happen before it happens to them, anyway. Stefari has to stay where he is. It's gonna be a really good sign if they don't tick up here. Because they can't ult this Teferi before they deck themselves. All right, so they're gonna go three fairy. All right. Yep, 
Yeah, so in order for us to not deck ourselves, what we need to do is we need to get um, Izoni. Izoni sacking creatures puts them at the bottom of our deck, so we can sack enough creatures to shuffle them all back in. Okay. Thassa does Thassa things, tapping down my board. Teferi does Teferi things. Choosing not to untap mana. We draw more lands. Fantastic. It's really making me regret not tapping, cracking this Fable Passage. But two more lands left in the deck of my 15. The moment I find Cauldron, they take 14, or 13, sorry, off Lotleth Giant. Okay. I mean, they're just wasting both of our times if, like, this card right here is not Thassa's Oracle. Ticks up to Fairy. Trust me, I have a plan. Because you got to beat me right now. This is how this goes. Gorging Vulture. Not going to play that. I don't need to. Or at least I think I don't need to. <laughs> Teferi's tucking Teferi's would do it, but we have gotten rid of a Teferi already, so... We'll see. You pass the turn, not ticking up. Last card. It's got to be Thassa's Oracle. Or another Teferi Hero of Dominaria. They tick up. We need to move they don't have any cards. <laughs> they lose the game. All right, then. Oh, that was... That, that was a thing, all right. Nearly half an hour. Wow, I'm going to have to edit this down a little bit so it's a little bit more interesting. Wow. Okay, so critique on our opponent's deck. They would have won had they had a Thassa's Oracle in their deck, which goes really well with Thassa, funnily enough, because Thassa's in the name. I think they were planning on decking me, but they realized that that just wasn't going to happen because I shuffle cards back into my deck. As I mentioned, Izoni comes down, produces a board that's bigger then Thassa can ever tap down for one, so we can get combat damage that way. And then we can also sacrifice creatures once Cauldron's out uh, to put them at the bottom of the deck, so we don't really have to play these Gorging Vultures and things like that. Uh, we can end up playing... Um, well, we actually have, like, Acolyte, which we could reanimate, which would mill a little bit, but it would put Vraska in the deck uh, into play. And from there we could do the ult, so that one point of damage is enough for lethal. We got lots of little, little different avenues anyway for beating our opponent there, but they could have won had they just had the right flicker card. I mean, if they'd have had Agent of Treachery, they'd have probably won, but I applaud our opponent for just not being boring enough, I guess. you got to be a little bit boring <laughs> to do what, what just happened there, but I don't know. It was interesting. I was interested by our opponent. Let's go for one more game. Alrighty then, we're in, and matchup dependent Verlu, Verlu, Plague, um, is a bit iffy in this hand, but other than that though, it looks okay, we've got some self mill, we've got removal. Opponent, I feel like we've played before actually, maybe they were the Death and Taxes deck that we ruffle stomped? Verlu and Plague's not going to be great for that matchup, I don't think. Yeah, I think this is like Mardu Humans or something was their plan. All right, well, we're just going to go Robber, uh, Maya Triton to block Robber of the Rich, putting one Plague Crafter, one Plaguey Boy into the yard. Hmm. I'm guessing this is not going to do anything. I'm trying to think of the human... Oh, more lands? Okay. I'm trying to think of the human tokens, and I don't think there are any to be honest. There's soldier tokens and there's things like that. Alright, rude. Very, very rude. Uh, well, if we don't kill this robber, he's going to keep <laughs> exiling our stuff, so let's just get rid of that. 
And then we've got the Ravenous Chupacabra, which we don't have to pay on Overgrown Tomb to kill the Bone Crusher. Or kill Thalia. Ooh. Purdy. Honestly, like, as card style art goes, that actually doesn't look that bad. I don't understand why we're doing this, but... It's pretty bad. It's pretty good. Alright, so, yeah, we're just gonna go and chup away the Thalia so that our Vraska is castable on four. Grab a swamp. Kill Thalia. Yeah, so we kind of know exactly how to beat our opponent's deck. Um, draw better things than this plague. Oh, actually, that's going to be pretty good. Afterlife. Uh, doesn't really work. I'll take it. Hmm. Yeah, so I think what we do is we go Gorging Vulture here. I guess we could actually minus the bodyguard. It's not the worst thing in the world. And then they run the Tide Taker into my Vraska to try and kill it. We block Chupacabra, adding to the um, undergrowth on Izoni. And when they get the spirit, thinking that's going to be their value, slap it away from them and get some actual vir virulent plague. Cannot. Cannot do that word. It's too much. Bone Crusher, shot. I still think they swing through. Gonna imagine that they... Hmm. Never mind. They surprise me. Well, we can go Glow Spore Shaman. Try and pump Izoni a little bit more. By one, apparently. And we'll take the Fabled Passage... I think we'll swing with Choop. I want to see if they'll block. They will not. And we do want that land. So we'll just play Murderous Rider here, I guess. And just add to the board. Yeah, we're going to get a little Izoni. But a little Izoni is still a good Izoni. Obviously, Plague and Izoni don't really go well together. Uh, but, you know, this is kind of an I win the game card in a certain matchup, which is why we're running it. It's not so much that it's just good in general. So, like, now that we've got Izoni, I don't really think that we run it out on the uh, Tide Taker here. I think it's probably just not worth doing. Uh, we can get a little bit greedy and go Gorging Vulture first. I can't see why there'd be much of an issue with that. Grab a Swamp. Yes, yeah, just go Gorging Vulture and see what we hit. Acolytes. Ooh, Journey's in there as well. Okay, so that's a good attack. That's really about it. <laughs> in with the Glow Spore. So we've got an Izoni X5 now. So we can get that card advantage going. Okay. Opponent. That's the Tide Taker value. Honestly, and this being a one of, like you don't really see it much, to be honest, so these are two one ofs that are kinda of clashing right now, but I wouldn't really think of them as uh two cards that you should try to avoid nomboing, you know. Alright, well I'm gonna absolutely happily block there. Then we get an X7 eyes only. See what our opponent can do about that. There's no plague engineers in uh, in historic, so I don't have to worry about them naming insect. Tajik. That can be a first striker. Well, this is getting a little bit out of hand. Suddenly the non-humans turn up and the deck becomes good. Okay, so we can block, block. That's the first strike damage, and then we can go one, two, three, and kill it. Is that worth doing? I almost feel it's not. 
almost feel like I might as well do that, that. If this is a removal spell, then we get a little bit blown out, but we don't really care other than that. I'll force them to pay the first strike here. So we get we get something out of it either way. See what we do. See what we do. Wow, we're getting both. That was the last thing I expected. I guess they want to just play Bone Crusher Giant with their turn. Don't know if that's necessarily worthwhile. But power to them, I suppose. Uh, we are going to go Glow Spore Shaman. Hit another Acolyte, unfortunately. Got one Acolyte and all three Cauldrons still left in our deck. That's crazy. Alright, I think we pass here. We have Double Eyes Only activation, so we can block and sack. Taking four in the air, but we're gaining two anyway. It's down to 12, virtual 14. Oh, it's got two cards, one's a land, and the other looks to be... It's something playable, but not something that they necessarily care to play right now. Hmm. Yeah, quite low impact kind of card by the sounds of it. Alright, so let's get rid of some tokens. Let's draw some cards. We really want to find the god tier cards. I'd put that on god tier level, to be honest. So, crack Fable Passage. Grab a forest, I guess. Doesn't really matter. Gonna go Cavalier. Sacking a token to kill Aurelia. And we have an Izoni Sacrifice Cavalier to get a 3-drop, which can be... It's like either Plague... Yeah, Plaguecraft is not bad, actually. Yeah, let's sack Cavalier and get Plaguecrafter. Gets rid of Bone Crusher. Kills their entire board, essentially. I'll trade up some damage. And yeah, let's get swinging. Down to 12. Our board state's much better than yours. Ah, that's what they were holding on. Okay. Well, this is totally fine. Oh, you are so dead, opponent. That is game over right there. Alright, Acolyte gets Cauldron. Cauldron gets played. Fable Passage gets cracked. Maya Triton gets paid. Get in there. Yeah, this game's over now. Uh, I don't think our opponent can win in any any way whatsoever. So we've got a graveyard full of things here. Have we got the uh, Lot of the Giants still in our deck? Okay. So then give Indestructible to something. Pump the Aurelia. Yep, so I force them to have first strike damage. Yep. Shuffle a card we didn't need into our deck. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my goodness. All right. We are going to grab Cavalier of Night out of the deck. Paying two, but gaining a virtual four on the lifelink there. Killing Aurelia, swinging for a huge amount of damage by also Maelstrom pulsing the Dauntless Bodyguard. So that would be two, four, six, I think. Seven, eight, nine, ten. Take him to two. Close, so we won't go for a full swing, I don't think, but I mean, they're only left with a Tajik and we've got a Colt. Uh, Cavalier blocker, anyway, so I guess we do actually go for the full swing. I think I, I'm not sure what that one is actually. I think that's a, the three one, right? 
something like that. But anyway, that's going to do it for today's video. This deck's a wonderful little monstrosity. Um, does fold a little bit to uh, certain decks, I will say. Um, heavy control decks are going to be a bit of an issue. Graveyard hate decks that just naturally graveyard hate people running Bajuka Bogs and whatnot are going to be a little bit of a problem. So, like, I'd guess Golos decks are going to be a bit of an issue since they can tutor up Bajuka Bog. We can fight a little bit through it, as hopefully the video today has kind of demonstrated that we kind of have like just a general beatdown plan of little little dudes and dudettes that just you know. Really attrition our opponent out of the game, but yeah, this next week. Really enjoy this one. Hopefully you guys did too. If you did, make sure to hit that like button and subscribe. It helps out the channel a great deal, especially in these trying times. Engagement is all the rage these days, so greatly appreciate it if you do end up doing that kind of thing. But without further ado, going to end it off here. Hopefully you guys enjoyed, and I'll see you all tomorrow for some brawl. I think we'll brawl tomorrow. I don't know what we're going to play, but we're going to have some fun. Take care, guys.